Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Frederik Steinmetz and today I'd like to present the mask modifier to you. There's been an upgrade to the mask modifier, I guess, in Blender 2.78. At least that's when I caught it, so I thought, let's update the video as well. In order to demonstrate the mask modifier, I should probably add it. So under the little wrench, add modifier, and we're going to mask. The new thing about the mask modifier is the mode. You can now choose armature, but let's start with the vertex group. So on this monkey, I have already prepared a vertex group and call it mask. I did this by pressing the plus and then assigning the vertex groups. You can also do that by weight painting. You can see very little weight, 25% weight, 50% weight, 75% weight, 100% weight. This is what the colors indicate. So if I enable the mask modifier by selecting the control group, the vertex group, you can see that all the colored vertices, except blue, the dark blue, disappear. And the reason for that is that the mask modifier actually takes all the vertices that have a weight greater than zero and leaves them. All the others get hidden. So what I usually do is I invert this because, I don't know, this just feels more natural to me and it's just the click of one button. So if you don't invert this, then all the vertices with a weight greater than zero will be shown. And if you do invert this, they will be hidden. Okay, so let's have a look here. Uh, this is blue. So you can see it is pretty dark. And the reason for that is, if we have a look at the vertex group, I can select all my vertices that belong to the group. And you can see I missed a few. But um, what's important is those vertices of the ear, they are also being hidden, even though they're part of the vertex group. Reason for that is they are part of the group, but with a weight of zero. This vertex, for example, has a weight of 0 0.001, which demonstrates the threshold for the mask modifier is actually zero. Everything, every vertex with a weight of greater than zero will be shown or hidden, depending on the little invert arrow. And you can see this is actually live. If I paint on this with a subtract, uh, you can see parts of my object disappear. Okay, so mask modifier, I guess one of the uses is in scene. If you want to model and you want to check the inside of your model, you can mask out part of it and then have a look inside without having to go into perspective mode and then really zooming in. And that's something I use it for. The second thing is if you want to use a character, for example, that has all arms and limbs, but you want to put some clothing on it and you know you don't remove it, it's probably a good idea to mask out the arms and legs because they will be hidden anyways and you don't need to render them and also they might cause weird shadows or poke through. So. Without destroying your model, you can use the mask modifier to dynamically mask that out. So let's have a look at the new feature. Again, I have a monkey that has an armature. If you select this one, you can see I didn't do a very good job rigging this, but it's just for demonstration purposes. There's one in the chin. Okay, I use the subsurf and armature, which you do usually use above the subsurf. And now let's put a mask modifier on there again. Instead of vertex group, we choose armature. Now we have to select an armature. There's only two armatures in my scene. So I'm going to use the eyedropper here. I drop the armature and you can see parts of my model disappear. So why is that? If I select the armature, you can see if I'm not in pose mode, it doesn't matter what I do. But if I am in pose mode, you can see when I click on different bones, different parts of a mesh will be shown. If I press Control tab or go into weight paint, while the armature is in pose mode, this is important. The armature needs to be in pose mode. And then I select this object and go into weight paint mode. Then you can see 
I'm going to disable the mask modifier for now. You can see that uh, the weights that are according to the bones are being shown. So this bone will only influence vertices that are not dark blue. And depending on how red they are, the more they get influenced by the armature. Okay, you can see here, the red parts get influenced all the way. The ear is rigid back, uh, back there. But here where it's uh, slightly more green, the effect of the armature gets mixed with this bone. All right, so now we know what the vertex groups are and we had a look at them. If I re-enable the mask modifier, you can see once I select a bone, all vertices that belong to the bone group, let's test that thesis. I have the head bone selected and this is what's visible. I'm going to select all that belongs to the head group and you can see select and you can see that uh, it does the same thing as the vertex group mode. It ignores those vertices with a weight that equals zero. Just to verify I'm going to choose a weight of zero, assign the ear and it should still be hidden and it is. Okay this is perfect for testing your bones. For example, it happens to me pretty often. I rig spiders and insects. They have eight legs and they're all named pretty similar. It happens a lot that one bone actually influences more than it's supposed to. So you get some weird behavior on your armature if that happens. And if you click through the bones and it's uh, as easy as this, you can immediately see if there was a vertex over here let's say like this and if it stayed there when this bone is selected you can see the ear does not do what i expect it to do but that is because it's visible by the mask modifier so it's very easy very quick to find out if there are vertices that get influenced by your bone meaning they are in the bones vertex group but are not supposed to because usually or a lot of the times they're actually pretty far away and if you just want to use the visual representation of the red, sometimes it's very hard to actually spot that because it can be very slight or because it might be a very small area. Let's see what happens if I put the bone to not deform. It still works because there are vertices named after the bone. So it does not go after the vertices that are influenced by the bone, because if I uncheck deform, none of them are. But it, it goes, uh, the mask modifier checks the vertex group of the bone and then does exactly the same thing as the vertex group mode does too. So for example, we now have the head and if I choose the vertex group mode and select the head, it looks exactly the same. So by Using the armature mode, you can basically dynamically switch through the vertex groups very quickly. Okay, in render, this does not work. It will just ignore it because how is the entire scene going to know which bone I selected last? And it would also be quite risky because when you're animating, uh, you can just select a different bone and then it would screw up the entire rendering. So don't use this for rendering. Just use it for uh, checking your bone groups or quickly hiding parts of your mesh. Okay, if I go back into object mode, you can see the. it doesn't matter what I do, the modifier basically freezes in place until I enter edit mode again and then select a different bone. As a final bonus, I'd like to show you one more use of the mask modifier, and that is that it's animatable. For example, I've put a dynamic paint simulation on the monkey. You can see wherever this intersects with the monkey, the monkey turns red, meaning that there is a vertex group with a weight of one. If I, anim if I click on this, you can see there's a slight animation. It just goes from left to right and it will paint the monkey and after some parts of the monkey leave the mesh volume again you can see they fade away. So what does I have to do with the mask? 
simple the mask is dynamic which means i can now add the mask choose my vertex group and you can see that the monkey animates in and it also fades out the problem is you can see that uh, the mask modifier is not, does not fade it's not it's absolute meaning as soon as the threshold is passed then the face will be hidden which means it will be quite jagged over here there's not really much use in animating this directly unless you manage to hide the face or do some other tricks like use vertex paint to fade them in or out i don't know this doesn't seem like it doesn't make much sense but in combination with a particle system this actually makes a lot of sense if you set the particle system to emitter it doesn't count for hair only with emitter there is not much you can do to animate the particles for example if i disable the mask modifier again and uh, for example i can't animate the number of particles I can't animate the lifetime, I can't animate start and end. So it's fairly hard to uh, get full control over those particles, but I can use a vertex group. So now in theory, the vertices should only be emitted from that group, but you can see that's not the case. And that is because the group is animated. So as if we were to use a static group, this would work, but since the group is animated, you can plainly see there's still particles coming from this part, even though it has left the volume a long time ago. Okay, so what can we do? We can actually use the mask, turn it back on, rewind, and now you can see the particles are only emitted where the faces are actually visible. Unfortunately, that means all the particles all the particle positions basically get spawned as soon as you enter this number. That means they all have their face and their time assigned. It's not being picked at random at the frame they're emitted. It's being picked at the, at the start of the animation. And that means if a face gets deleted while it's supposed to be emitting particles, what the particle system does is falls back to the default, which would be the origin. So every particle that gets emitted by a face, or that would get emitted by a face, that has been hidden by the mask modifier, it will be emitted from the origin. Or you can easily build a cage around that and kill all the particles that are emitted there. Or some other tricks in combination with light path on whatever. But this is the only way I found to animate where the particles are emitted on a mesh dynamically. That's it about the mask modifier. I hope you found this information useful and thank you for watching.